So what I thought I might do in this series is uh, create an image using an AI website, uh, hence this one's being Halloween, and then bring that image into Affinity Designer and redesign the entire thing within Affinity Designer. Now there's a couple of reasons why we'd like to do this. Uh, I work in the graphic design industry and sometimes we use AI to uh, concept work out, but then we always recreate that work from scratch so that we have an original version that we're able to edit and modify as required. Uh, I've never had a client that's come back to me and say, yes, that's perfect. There's always some small change, regardless of how much you go through the brief. So if you've got an AI image to start with and the client requires certain changes or, or in fact even massive changes, how do you then manipulate it without going through AI again and trying to get consistency with that image? It's much quicker to recreate the concept from scratch. Therefore, you have an image that, uh, especially if you're doing in vector, you have an image that you can blow up to any size. So if they're looking for offset printing or signage, you can, you can scale the image up and you can make these tweaks and these image changes relatively easy because you have designed from scratch. So that's the idea behind this little uh, series of courses that we've got, or not courses, but series of episodes, is how to recreate this image. Now, if you're a beginner, feel free to follow along. I only use about three or four tools. Repetition is the key here. Learning how to use the tools within Affinity Designer, because it's a very powerful program. There's a lot of ways to use different different tools to get different results. So hopefully you have a bit of fun with this. If you do like the format, remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell, and I'll keep creating these, these types of tutorials. Uh, I also have a 3D background, character stylized character design, so I also like to recreate a lot of characters in 2D from my actual 3D designs. So stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy. So the first thing we need to do is draw out a ellipse or a circle. Give it a white color. And now we need to click the G button or hit the G button for the gradient tool, or you can select it on the toolbar over here. And then select elliptical. From here, we'll now start to build our color scheme. Color number one. Now, what I'll do, I'll just move that down a little bit so that we can actually sew it out. So, color number one. And I will paste these uh, hex colors in the description below as well, so you can copy and paste them. Color number two. Remembering to click as you go. So color number three. So once you've selected it, click the color to assign it. Color number four. Assign it and lucky last. Color number five. All right, we've got a lovely gradient. Now, try and add the brightest parts of the center. And what we'll need to do is add an inner glow as well, and that will give us the lines for the pumpkin to sort of determine the shape. I find it easier to uh, make a copy as well on top, so Control C and Control V, and shrink it down. That way I can see what my inner glow is actually doing. To come across the quick effects tab, if you haven't got it open, you click on windows and then quick effects. And what we want is inner glow. You can't see all of the options that we have up here. What you need to do is click on the little uh, layer effect cog there. And I'll give you a couple more options. So for our blend mode, we want normal. Opacity will leave it 100. Radius will leave it 13.7. Well, round about, well, 13.7. Now in here I've got 56, but I found 27 actually works better. And for our color, once again, I will copy this X color to the comments. We'll just assign that color. There we go. Now, make it easy for yourself, right click. Click add, uh, not add to style swatches. We want to create a style that will add it to your styles panel down the bottom and it'll make it easier for when we create the other shape. So now that we've got that shape, let's come across and work out the pumpkin itself. So drag out a new circle. Now it will probably retain the colors that you have. If it hasn't, if you've dragged it out and it looks like this, 
simply drag it in a circle, click on your colour. Repeat, control, control C, control B to copy and paste. That one there. Now I'll hold control and the left square bracket and that will send it behind the first object or you can right click, click on a range and click move forward one or move back one. So remember that shortcut, really handy. Do the same again, control C, control V, control square bracket to move it back one. Pull out the shape. Grab the second one, control C, control V, move it across, and then grab the last one again, control C, control V, and move it across the other side. As you can see, a pretty good looking pumpkin. Now you, you probably need to refine it a little bit, so just to put in some of these edges. It's a pumpkin at the end of the day. No one's really gonna not notice that it's a pumpkin. What am I trying to say? As long as it looks like a pumpkin is what I'm trying to say. So there we go. We will refine it a little bit more, but that's our initial pumpkin shape. So that's probably the hardest part of this tutorial. Uh, but like I said, it took me ages. So once again, add your gradient ellipses, add your inner glow, save it as a style, drag out the shapes, we'll move on to the next pumpkin.